Hello, and welcome to the Curriculum Development Process Professional Learning Series. The focus of this video is to provide an overview of the Reading and Writing Consumer Guide designed to support districts in selecting high quality reading and writing instructional resources. My name is Misty Higgins, and I am joined by Fox DeMoise, and we are professional learning coordinators in the Division of Program Standards in the Office of Teaching and Learning at the Kentucky Department of Education. In this video, we are going to highlight the purpose of the Consumer Guide, look at the overall structure of the guide in its three main parts, examine KDE's markers of high quality reading and writing resources, as well as highlight some of the key tools in the Consumer Guide to support districts in the selection process. This slide highlights the curriculum development process outlined in the uh, model curriculum framework, which consists of four phases and includes preparing for the process, articulating an instructional vision, developing the curriculum, and then implementing and monitoring the curriculum. The first phase in uh, the first step in phase three is for the curriculum team to identify, evaluate, and select a primary high quality instructional resource, and then use the HQIR as they develop their curriculum. While the curriculum development process provides general guidance that can be applied across all content areas, we wanted to provide more support for selecting resources specifically aligned to the Kentucky Academic Standards for each content area. KRS 156405 also establishes the need for the KDE to provide a consumer guide to support districts in the evaluation and selection of instructional resources. So based on this and state data, the KDE began this work with developing a reading and writing consumer guide. The consumer guide consists of three primary parts. The introduction includes information with a narrative portion about the importance of HQIRs and how the selection of resources fits within the bigger picture of the curriculum development process. Characteristics of high quality reading and writing resources is what makes this applicable to reading and writing by providing a list of the characteristics of high quality reading and writing resources. This includes KDE's general characteristics of HQIRs, the specific markers for reading and writing, and the equity lenses with specific look for us in reading and writing resources. The third section is comprised of tools to help with identification, evaluation, and selection of high quality instructional resources for reading and writing. Today, we will focus on the second section, characteristics of reading and writing high quality instructional resources. KDE's general definition of HQIRs comes early in this section and offers five criteria. Please take a moment to read them now. To clarify briefly some important terms, by comprehensive we mean resources address the full depth of standards for each grade level and include pedagogical and instructional supports to meet the diverse needs of students. Culturally relevant free from bias in this context is thinking about acknowledging students' ethnic, racial, and linguistic identities within the context of their grade level work in ways that do not create barriers to obstruct student learning and materials that are accessible for all students looks to ensure equitable opportunities, regardless of unique experiences and qualities. So students can engage meaningfully in the learning process and have an opportunity to fully demonstrate their understandings and skills. Let's take a brief look now at KDE's markers of high quality reading and writing resources to further explore what full alignment to the cast might entail in this content area. Please take a moment to read these. While detailed explanation is offered for each within the consumer guide, some that may require added attention for curriculum teams could be text quality and complexity, both qualitative and quantitative, interdisciplinary literacy practices and how they help students engage in a vibrant literacy rich environment, and research based practices for foundational skills and how the CAS aligns to current research and best practices. There is also a detailed table of the equity lenses linked in that subsection of the consumer guide to support districts in selecting reading and writing resources that are culturally relevant and free from bias, elaborating more fully what that could involve. For each lens of the table, it offers what the lens means and implications for that in reading and writing resources. 
the last part of the consumer guide outlines the four set process districts can use to identify, evaluate, and select high quality reading and writing instructional resources. This is the same process found in phase three, step one of the curriculum development process. The four steps start with determining selection criteria based on your local instructional vision and the markers of high quality reading and writing resources from the consumer guide. Then the local curriculum team identifies potential high quality instructional resources to further explore, evaluates two to four potential HQIRs against the selection criteria to finally select a primary HQIR to support implementation of the instructional vision and the local curriculum. As the table of content shows, for each step of the process, the consumer guide includes a brief description of the purpose of the step, key questions the committee should consider as they engage in that step, and key tools to support the work. The three key tools represented on this slide align to focus areas where districts and schools will likely need significant support. The reading and writing analysis considerations support deep analysis of the CAS to help make sure all embedded in and around the standards get due consideration as a shared understanding is created. It helps to assure places potentially overlooked get seen. The equity lenses offer five lenses a reading and writing curriculum team can evaluate a resource through, explain what each lens entails, and then connects it directly to reading and writing. The sample vendor questions were created through the KDE's partnership with Achievement Network and offer important questions and question types curricular, curriculum teams might not think of when engaging resource vendors. So thank you for viewing this video and please feel free to reach out to me or to Misty with any questions you might have.